The electronic throttle control um, basically consists of two subsystems, let's say. We have the actuation, which is the motor that actually drives the throttle plate, and the position feedback, which comes from the throttle position sensors. Um, again, it might make sense to at least some of that there's two channels um, for the sake of redundancy. Obviously, this is a safety critical item. So there's two channels. Some vehicles actually have three, I believe, but in the case of the Suzuki Vitara, which is the drawing we're actually looking at, there's two channels. So I'm not going to focus on the actuation tonight, which is a bi-directional chopper circuit, which is the driver H bridge, if you will, that actually actuates the motor at a desired rate and direction. We'll leave that discussion for another night, but I want to just focus on the, uh, the position feedback because I don't think I've done this justice in the back. I've, I've done a wee bit of a video in the past about the electronic throttle control, but I, I don't think I really did it justice, so I'd like to have a, another kick at that. So we'll take a look at the two channels, and they're called Main and Sub by Suzuki, right? Um, and just to make it confusing, the Sub actually puts out a value in volts, which is actually higher than, uh, than the main, respective of the throttle plate position. So these two um, position feedback potentiometers, they don't sing the same song. They're intentionally putting a, slightly, a slight differential so that in the event there is a circuit failure, guys like, uh, <laughs> well at least some of us, might be tempted just to jump the uh, primary and secondary channel the main and the sub together in order to fool the system. Well, they've gone out of their way to make sure that's not a possibility by making sure that there has to be a differential. The system has fault monitoring that if the differential uh, window, let's call it, is busted, it knows that there's an issue with the uh, position sensing for the throttle plate. So here's the graph. And this, if we hook our oscilloscope up, this is what the traces should actually look like. So we're at idle in the position C here, and we're at wide open thr throttle in position D. So the main and the sub, as I said, just to make it confusing, uh, talk to the Suzuki engineers, I don't know why they did that. The sub channel actually puts out a higher voltage than the main. So as we open the throttle plate over the range, these are the voltages that we should expect to see on our, uh, well, ideally an oscilloscope, although you could certainly do it with a, uh, I guess you could do it with a uh, uh, digital multimeter, but it's certainly not going to prove as, uh, as effective. Um, so this is what I want to look at. There's a couple other uh, items that we can uh, consider when we're actually at the car, but this is what I want to focus on because uh, it's kind of interesting. Okay, so here we are just underneath one of the there's a resonator box on the uh, air intake track. So there's the uh, ETC itself, as you can see. And I've tried to keep the uh, color coding consistent on everything, guys, right? So the yellow is for the main. It's in the uh, the black wire. It goes to the uh, multi-plug there. And the blue actually goes to the red. So we're pinned in on the main and the uh, sub, the yellow and the blue, respectively, there. So I'm going to take you inside the car because I'm trying to do this by myself. And uh, the Suzuki, I think unlike some other cars, uh, I believe you can actually move the uh, throttle plate, if I recall, via the uh, APP, your gas pedal. Uh, unlike some other cars where I think it actually needs to be running, I believe we can actually move this through its uh, full range of travel just uh, with the, with the uh, key on engine off. Okay guys, so there's the uh, two channels. Um, you might notice that I'm actually out of tolerance with respect to the specification on the bottom end, uh, but that I strongly suspect is because I've got the uh, the Handtech uh, 1008C operating well outside its normal operating uh, temperature. It's absolutely freezing in my garage, so I think that's throwing off the measurements just a wee bit. Uh, strangely just on the bottom end um, make sure you are in roll mode um, you can see there uh, the mode selection is uh, if you go into the menu hope you can see here horizontal 
I'm going to horizontal here, guys. Sorry, I'm in the wrong mode here. Let me go to set up horizontal. Hope you can see what I'm doing here. And you can see you can select whatever uh, YT mode you want here. Make sure you're in roll. If you're in any of the other modes, it's not gonna uh, you're not gonna be able to see it um, quite as nice on the screen because uh, you'll get paging and uh, um, yeah, it's just you can miss some of the data. It's not quite as linear and uh, much better if you're actually in roll mode. So we're in roll mode. There's the two channels again. The color uh, coding is. Uh, is consistent the yellow is main and the blue is um, uh, the sub channel as I said the sub is actually a wee bit higher voltage so I'm just sweeping up and you can see as you go towards the top end there should be a convergence in the signal although it doesn't quite actually come together right just like the graph actually shows us there is a convergence in the signal and then of course a divergence when you actually decelerate so I'm lifting my foot off the pedal um, yeah, so again, the min-max figures are a wee bit on my screen here, guys, but I'm, I'm not too, too worried about that, to be quite honest. Another handy function you can use is actually the math channel, and I'll show you why. Uh, under setup, the math channel. I've got the, the math channel that's set up so that I'm uh, I'm actually subtracting the, uh, the main from the sub. All right, so that's what I've got actually set up. So it's A minus B. Um, Channel one or the yellow channel is uh, is uh, B, so it's A minus B. So I'll show you what we get on the math channel. I'll show you why it's kind of handy. Uh, don't forget to turn it on. Math channel. Don't forget to actually select turn it on. There it is. So because there is a convergence uh, on the acceleration and a divergence on deceleration. You should be able to see that in the math channel. I'll show you what I mean. As you sweep up, you can see that the the math channel is actually dropping down. That's just the difference that the math channel is actually moving. And now on the divergence, you'll see that the math channel will actually sweep up. So it's basically the math channel is just displaying the difference, right? So theoretically, that would be about half the difference right there. And then the other half. It's not quite a linear, uh, it's not quite a linear split as you move up through the, uh, through the travel. But yeah, as I said, um, your car may or may not actually allow you to move the, uh, uh, the throttle plate. As you can hear, the car is not running, guys. Obviously, in a wooden wide open throttle, the car, it probably most modern cars won't even let you wide open throttle the car when you're in park, of course, right? So, yeah, you can see, um, although the measurements are, we, are we, uh, the, really the main uh, point of interest here, is there, is there any dropouts? Is there any glitching? Is there any discrepancy between the two channels other than a standard convergence and divergence? And, uh, by the way, some uh, throttle position sensors, APP sensors, I think actually don't use a convergence and divergence like this. They actually use a crossover where one will start close to five volts, the other one close to say half a volt, and then they'll sweep in ab uh, absolute opposite directions. So at the 45 de degree point of travel in the throttle plate, since it only moves 90 degrees, they'll basically converge in and around two and a half volts. Anyway, so I hope uh, you got something out of that, guys. Uh, the math channel might prove handy for some guys. The measurement functions, um, let's see on the top end, I think it's being is close to being correct. So just watch the max values. Yeah, there's the max values. We've got four and 4.2. And you can see the spec is uh, um, within 4.2 and just over four. So that, that works out. And on the bottom end, as I said, uh, a bit wonky on the bottom end here quite a bit wonky in fact there's quite a bit of offset it should be a maximum of uh on the on the main the yellow channel uh 0.75 we've got 93 as you can see there and uh 1.6 so we're a wee bit over that so yeah that's actually i know that is just the offset on my scope is not quite correct uh again i'm operating in a near freezing condition in my garage here so I don't think the hand tech is too too happy with it of course i could calibrate it and maybe may be able to get a bit closer but it doesn't really matter i think i've made the point there guys so uh yeah remember the roll mode is important 
In fact, let me just go into the the, uh, the other mod and I'll show you why. There's a big difference. Uh, set up horizontal. I'll show you in the normal mode, YT mode. This is what it ends up looking like. And what happens is you just actually get the lines jumping up. And that, that of course is useless. That that proves no good to you at all because the the hand tech only updates about once every couple of seconds or so or half, every second or so. So that is really completely useless to you. So you want to be in the roll mode and uh that'll uh, that'll prove much more useful. Again, I'll go back to roll mode. I'm gonna try to labor the point here, guys, but I know some of the guys like the details on the hand tech. There's a million and one users of the Pico, but no too, too many left on the hand tech. So horizontal under setup and go back to roll. Makes a huge difference. The roll moves from uh, right to left on the screen as opposed to scan. Don't use scan either because you do get paging and dropouts. Use roll and you won't get any dropouts. And you can see a huge difference and the utility obviously between the screens right right so that's it boys this went actually a bit longer than i anticipated as it, as it always does i'll leave it at that hope uh, hopefully you got something out of that right cheers